let's start with Andrew Lockyer. Um, what did you know of JK, being a boy from Northampton and knowing how good your town has been at producing footballers, uh, what did you know about this young kid at, back in the day? Um, like, any, uh, like any football team uh, at HML, you have your scouts out there and they're telling you about which kids are coming through and all that. And I had my scouts in Northampton tell me, there's a skinny kid, he's a really nice kid. The scout was my mum. Um, <laughs> She said, there's a nice boy that lives around the corner from us and they reckon he can play a bit and he might be coming down. So I said, oh, what's his name? And she said, oh, I think it's Josh Kennedy. I think that's it. So he can play a bit. So I saw Josh about 2004 in December when we met and yeah, he was a nice enough kid. And then he come down in 05 to start pre-season. Then, you know, he's got this layback you know, persona and... He was uh, hit with all these teammates because he was a leader of the pack. He organised all the parties and all that straight away. And, um, and he had a bit of a swagger about him. So when he came down, so, you know, I think he thought he was pretty good. So you're his East Fremantle coach. What was, his, uh, what was his kicking style like going back in those early days? Was he skipping then? Oh, look, we, uh, we had some really good coaching staff down at East Fremantle. We had Bruce Monteith, the... Uh, 1980 Richmond captain down there and myself and we took JK away and we did some practice with him we had him just run up smooth it was a beautiful thing and um, so I don't know if these two blokes here ruined him but I certainly had him going pretty well that was Woosh <laughs> that was Woosher. it would have been Woosher because he tried to say every time I played with him locks I'm a Ford and then Mickey Moldass just doesn't know it yet <laughs> <laughs> now you teamed up with some uh, other players that have grown up uh, and some of them still playing AFL and JK I know is a big part of on the back of Cyclone Sarosia and the work that was done in your community back uh, in your hometown. Yeah probably as everyone knows probably about 18 months ago we were our community along with Calberry and other communities devastated by Cyclone Sarosia. I, um, I quickly rang around and said to a couple of players I said I rang up Hayes Paul Hazelby and also JK said, look, you know, physically we can't probably do too much with our town, but we might be able to raise some funds to help them out. And the good thing about JK, we will celebrate his life as a footballer, but he's a, he's a ripper of a bloke off the field. And um, every time I asked him to say, look, we want to do this, he said, yeah, I'm in locks. When do you need me there and what do you need me to do? And uh, it, like, there was one game where he kicked the winning goal of Richmond um, from the boundary line. The next day he was in North Ham with me cooking sausages for the team up at uh, North Ham Footy Club. So that's the kind of bloke he is. He's, he's just an excellent bloke. We had, a, we had a game of waffle up there this year and uh, JK said to me, yeah, I'm up there locks, but I've got to have a position right behind the goal so I can put my family down. So he does come with some bad, you know, he's a bit needy sometimes, JK, but, <laughs> uh, but he, he, he's, he's terrific. And he put on a function across the road here at Optus uh, Oval and um, we're raising funds for Cyclone Sarogia. And out that night, we raised $178,000 for Northampton. And overall, through the work of... We've got, we had nine now, we've got 11 people who've played AFL football, men's and women's, and we've raised over $400,000 for our town, so, which we're putting back. Good job. Um, keep up the good work, Buzz, because I know you will. Um, look, when it comes to when JK first came to the club, Bush, what were, your, what were your first impressions when you reflect back to that time? Um, well, my first reflection, I was still wiping the tears away from Juddy leaving. <laughs> so uh, I think when um, Josh might have thought, gee, Bush is happy to see me, he's already crying. But, uh, you know, obviously when we were talking about uh, what do we need going forward, you know, we're going to lose you know, a great player back to C Carlton, but that brings with it a value. And we've got one opportunity here to maximise... Uh, what we need going forward. And we identified that we wanted a, a really talented young key forward coming through the ranks. Uh, so our recruiting guy said, well, Josh Kennedy is the one. We've got to get him out of Carlton. Um, he's the one. They won't want to give him up, but uh, we're going to hold firm and, and that's what we're going to go for. Um, so, you know, all credit to, you know, the people, our list managers and our, and our recruiting staff who always rated Josh really highly. Um, 
as soon as that opportunity came, that's what, uh, that's what we targeted. So we were wrapped to get him. We knew he was raw and he hadn't played a lot of footy at that stage. And we all know that those taller uh, players come on a little bit later. Um, but we were very confident he was going to be a great player for us. So when you got him there and you started working with him, what, what was he like? Uh, he was great, yeah. He, um, he knew that he'd had a few injuries along the way and he was a bit concerned about that. So he was already identifying what he needed to work on, you know. And um, look, there was uh, this time where he came and said, uh, Coach, I need to see you. And I said, absolutely, mate, come and see me. This is not long after we got him. And um, he came into my office and said, I've got a problem, whoosh. And I'm thinking, okay, whoosh. Can't be that big a problem, he's looking good, but I said, what's your problem, Josh? And he said, oh, I drink too much. And I thought, okay, so we just traded out a Brownlow medalist who is the most professional athlete in Australia, and we've uh, traded in an alcoholic. <laughs> so anyway, I kept my demeanor, you know, I, I tried not to fall off my chair, and I said, why is, it a, why is that a problem, Josh? And he said, oh, because I get it, I'm having a few injuries, and I." That's not going to make me the best player that I want to be. But prior to that, I did say, "Why? You know, what do you mean you've got a drinking problem?" And he said, "Well, Wush, I'm I'm just good at it. I I'm the life of the party. The boys can't have a gathering without me being there. I just run the drinking games, and you know, we did have a bit of a cultural issue at that point. I'm thinking, now we're in real strife. Uh, reverse the trade, whatever we can do. But um, no, he, you know, what was great as a coach is obviously that this is a young man that's identified that he's got a part of his life that he doesn't see as making him or giving him the opportunity to be what he wanted. Uh, so it was a pretty simple formula. I asked him to think about what level of drinking would be suitable for him to achieve what he wanted. And uh, he came back with a, two days later, he came back with a written plan. And on the top of the sheet, it's just called, he put a lot of thought into it, JK's drinking plan. <laughs> um, but it was, it was like, uh, it gave me a lot of confidence that he knew what it was going to take and what he wanted to get out of his footy career and um, away we went. Uh, bare feet. <laughs> um. No different because Carl once, you know, you know you're professional, you get a corky in a game and you put ice on it and Carl used to say, no, nah, no, nah, drink beer when you get a cork because it thins your blood and it gets all that corky out. you just got to drink beer, so. Yeah. Yeah, it works for us country boys. I don't know about the city boys. <laughs> no. uh, when, he, when did he arrive for you? Like, was it the 10 that he booted back in 2011? Was it prior to that? I mean, what's your, just as we um, Yeah, uh, it was probably the first time at training when he beat Lecker in their competition after training. You know, they would compete for goal, goal kicking uh, nonstop. But no, it was really, um, I don't know if it was then, uh, but I was just watching his growth all the way through and the work he put in. So the extra work he put on um, every type of shot for goal that he was likely to have in a game. So not just going back from 50 metres out and having bombs after training, but he would have shots from 50 out, he would have shots on every angle from 30 out, he would practice his kicks around the corner, uh, snapshots. Um, so the extra work he put into building his game showed he was going to be a, a great player, but he was a clutch player. You know, he did things in big moments, um, which coaches love. Uh, when you're sitting there going, this is totally out of our hands, which way this game's going to go. And I did see on his highlights tape earlier, there was a game against Adelaide, I think in 2013, in Adelaide. And uh, it was all level at the 28 and a half minute mark. The game was a draw and uh, he gathered the ball on the 50 metre arc, maybe just outside under pressure. Uh, took on a couple of guys that were right on his hammer and kicked a goal on his left foot. Uh, like, that's pretty special to have a player that can do that uh, at that stage of the game. Especially that size that he was uh, and his ability. And Simo, 2014. Is the first time you come face to face with JK. Uh, what yeah. was the, the first memory that you have of the big fella? Um, well, uh, I just moved to Perth, didn't know anyone, and I needed a mattress. And he owned a franchise Sleepies. called Sleepies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so my first conversation with JK was, mate, I need, I need a bed. 
And um, and he goes, yeah, mate, no worries. You know, get you know down Scarborough that that way. And um, three and a half grand later, um, <laughs> queen size. And uh, it's fair to say it was on the nature strip three weeks after I bought it. And then I reckon about four, for four weeks it was still out there. Um, so he had the he had sleepies, and then he had JK removalists uh, as a business. So I moved from house to house, and I went from. Wembley to West Leaderville, and it took three weeks for the truck <laughs> to pick up my gear and go to West Leaderville. And then there was the beard, um, which he, he spot on. We, we, uh, he, I, I didn't like it. They had the, it wasn't just the beard, it was the big Jesus beard. It was pretty long. And the barn at the top, and that was uh, predominantly Scoey and, and Masto. And then JK did walk in and say, listen, mate, you know, this is this is who I am, it's my identity. And I said, mate, the fact you've walked in, absolutely, you can keep that beard. Um, so they're the three things. And then I realized how good a f footballer he actually was. The one memory from, from training and pre-season I do remember is how he wanted to blow up the GPS every session, every drill. So he'd go over to the tent and ask for, am I number one for this particular drill? And uh, he set the standard for, for training in my first couple of years as a coach. On field, probably the most selfish player I've ever coached <laughs> until he kicked the first goal. If he kicked his first goal, then the most unselfish player I ever coached. But if it was halfway through the last and he hadn't kicked the goal, he's pushing blokes out the way. <laughs> no handballs, JK, absolutely none. But when he hit the scoreboard, then it was like the shoulders dropped and then he could let loose, which um, we all saw many times. How was the conversation when you, which he's already told us, wanted to get rid of the goal kicking award? How, how did that conversation all start? Well, where's the backline award? Where's the most spoils award? You know, McGov <laughs> asked me every second week, you know, what's going on here? Um, so I've been campaigning with Niz a little bit. Now he's out the back there, Gov, somewhere, probably table 99. <laughs> um, there's only two or three players, it was probably while JK's playing, there's only one player that can win the JK goal kicking award, and um, he won it seven times. <laughs> so, oh, look, I, I did bring that my first year. I thought, well, what's going on here? There's a goal kicking award. Why can't we have the midfielder award, the, the most best defensive player award? But we kept it, and um, he won it seven times. Uh, with your uh, leadership group, which tends to be a lot bigger than it was when Bush was just our captain. We had a vice captain these days. What, what was he like? Was he a, a good example to his to his fellow teammates, or was he a rascal? How did he work? No, nah, he was all class. Uh, you know, and I'm, we should be potting him a lot more tonight. And I hope Lecker you unleash later on. Um, but to, to be honest, he was the ultimate leader because he wasn't chasing the title, um, he was the type of person, and Shannon Hearn was the same, and they would have learned it under Woosh and, and through, through your era, about how to lead uh, on and off the field through humility and just being, uh, the values that they set were, were really clear. So um, a lot of our players, I'm sure, think, what would JK do right now? And that's not on field, it's probably more off field, how you, how you handle yourself as a person with your family the community and then obviously the football club. So those things are, are cut above and it doesn't matter if you're captain, vice captain or whatever. Um, you don't even have to be in the leadership group, but that's what he probably instilled and hopefully will instill to the leaders we have coming through. We're out of time. Final word, Woosh, as we farewell the audience tonight about JK. I, well, we're all, we're all obviously very proud of him, uh, what he achieved. I, I do remember, I, I'm pretty sure I guaranteed him uh, when we were wooing him, um, trying to convince him to come to West Coast, that we would provide an environment for him to achieve the absolute best player he could be. But the key was we would provide the environment, he had to do the work, and you know, as Simo just said, he's done the work and, and just had a remarkable footy career. Terrific. Simo? Well, absolutely. Um, I think... Uh, Throughout his career, he's just maintained his personal brand and his identity of who he is as a person. Um, I think it was in 15 or 16 when he was looking to, to get engaged, and he asked if he could do it while skydiving during the buy round <laughs> in 2015. He said, no, mate, you, you're not doing that. Um, and uh, 
I still think he'd ask the same question um, in, oh, I'm sure he won't get married again, but uh, the type of person he is is how he identifies himself as a unique person that is happy to speak um, on behalf of himself and his family and uh, he's one of my favourite players I've ever coached. My, my thoughts on, um, is probably not a football thing, but from Northampton, you know, we're all so proud of JK. You know, we, um, we all love him, I love him, and uh, as we say, he's a, he's a good old money my boy, so well done JK, we love you mate. Put your hands together for our three guests everyone, thanks boys.